PCOS and fertility, what should you do to treat your PCOS and what's backed by science? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. So I'm a fertility doctor and today I'm talking about something that I talk about every single day in clinic and there is so much misinformation on the internet and that is PCOS. And I'm going to go over with you some strategies about what you can actually do and what might be fake news that's out there and what is really backed in science. So giving you all the facts in today's video. A few notes before we start. Thank you so much for being here. As always, this channel exists for you and I love seeing it grow. So please subscribe, share, leave a comment, like all the things that help spread this message to more people. Also, if the information in this channel resonates with you, please don't hesitate to buy The Fertility Formula. This is my debut book coming out in 2026. And if you order right now, you'll also be eligible for the pre-order bonuses. And this is only for pre-order. So immediately, you're going to get a lifestyle hormone guide. So a lot of the stuff we're talking about today, you'll get more information on. And you're going to get access to the IVF guide, which is a course that I made Normally sells for $150, but you get access to it just by buying the book. So you can pre-order the book, nataliecrawfordmd.com slash book. Go on my website. You'll then put in all your order information and you'll get your pre-order bonuses. So thank you so much for supporting the channel and let's dive in and talk about PCOS. If we're talking about PCOS and what to do to treat it, we have to make sure we have a baseline understanding of what PCOS is. And I've heard so many different theories about what causes PCOS. So I think it's important that we are all on the same page. So the way I like to think about this is if you imagine your ovary, imagine that there's a vault inside where all your eggs are kept. And at the start of your life, the vault is full and throughout your life, eggs come out of the vault. Well, each month, a group of eggs comes out of that vault. Each egg grows in a follicle and the brain sends out FSH or follicle stimulating hormone, which is a well-named hormone, which gets one follicle to grow. As it grows, the egg matures. And then that high estrogen level from the mature egg tells the brain that the egg is mature, and then the brain sends out a surge of LH or luteinizing hormone. Well, that first surge of LH allows the follicle to rupture, the egg to be released, and this is ovulation. And then after that, the follicle is gonna reform, become a cyst known as the corpus luteum, and then the corpus luteum is going to make progesterone impulses throughout the luteal phase. And this is due to LH pulses from the brain stimulating the progesterone. So that is normal, so what happens in PCOS? A couple different ways to look at it, but one of the top things that I like to think about is that in PCOS, you have a higher than normal egg count, which doesn't necessarily sound like a bad thing and it isn't always, but because the brain and the ovary are disconnected, they cannot see each other, the brain doesn't know that the ovary has a high egg count. What happens is the brain is going to send out a normal amount of FSH and that FSH is going to get diluted amongst all of your follicles. So it is not a strong enough signal to get one egg to grow reliably and predictably. When that happens, you get stuck in this follicular phase, essentially that first part of the cycle where estrogen is relatively low. You do not have progesterone. You have not ovulated. Essentially, the ovary is not chugging out a lot of estrogen or hormones. Very important side note. So with mature egg, you're going to make an estrogen level about 200 picograms. Each immature egg, let's say, makes estrogen about one picogram. So you do have more estrogen than the average person at baseline because you have more eggs than the average person at baseline. So if I said a normal baseline estrogen is 20 picograms, if you have PCOS and you have double the amount of follicles, you may get 40 picograms on your baseline level. You may be told that you are estrogen dominant. Again, it's just the follicular phase. Your baseline is just a little bit higher. And part of the problem here is you're not ovulating. Well, what we see is that two things happen. The brain is sitting out a normal FSH. It's getting diluted. So it's going to take you longer to ovulate. When that's happening, the ovary then shifts and gets really bored and starts chugging out, you got it, testosterone. So now the pathway brain to ovary to testosterone becomes very easy. This is going to cause some of those androgen signs, high blood levels, but also clinical symptoms like acne, hair growth, male pattern baldness, and abdominal weight gain. This is then going to change your metabolic parameters. And because of the high testosterone, you're going to see a metabolic shift, low estrogen, higher T. Suddenly now you're going to deal with more inflammation and insulin resistance. And you really get caught on this pathway that makes it very hard to come off. Because the baseline estrogen is a little bit higher because you have more follicles, the brain doesn't actually get the signal that you're not truly ovulating. It sees that estrogen of 
let's say 40, and it's just enough to prevent another signal from coming. So this can be really frustrating. It can be really difficult. And how I always describe PCOS to my patients is that it's a delicate state of hormone balance that's going to shift day to day, month to month, meaning it might be perfect one month. And then maybe you get stressed or you don't get as much sleep or you get sick. It might shift or you have a higher or a lower egg count release because we know that vault's not perfect. So the unpredictability is an actual part of the syndrome. Okay, last bit before we dive into treatment. Remember how we diagnose PCOS? Two out of three, these are called Rotterdam criteria. One, high egg count. Two, seeing any clinical or lab signs of high androgens, those signs like testosterone that I went over. And three is going to be irregular or absent period. And so just two out of three of these gets you the diagnosis. Well, if we are going to think about how we're gonna treat this, the goal is going to be to backtrack this cycle. So we want to decrease inflammation, decrease insulin resistance. Remember that insulin resistance is a big cause of inflammation. So if somebody acts like inflammation's not a big deal in your fertility, they're just not understanding the connection between insulin resistance, inflammation, and the entirety of PCOS. And ideally, if I can get you to ovulate, then this will naturally reverse somewhat. But obviously, we've got to back into this, especially if you have a high egg count. Other thing I want to say as a disclaimer is that some people do every single thing I'm going to say, and they're still going to need fertility treatments, and that's okay. So we have lifestyle changes, we have supplements that we can use, and we have fertility treatments, and it's not a failure if that's where you end up needing to go. So let's talk about lifestyle. Number one, we're going to decrease inflammation with our lifestyle. First thing you should do is sleep at least seven and a half or eight hours a night. Put your phone somewhere else, make a good sleeping environment. Sleep is when your body heals from inflammation. If you're not getting enough sleep, you're not setting things up correctly. Number two, gut health. We can't underestimate the fact that the gut is what is allowing a lot into your body. Your gut health is directly correlated to inflammation levels. So we think about things like gut permeability, the gut microbiome. That's actually really important. The gut metabolizes estrogen. So we want your body to metabolize estrogen so your brain can hopefully sense a lower level. This means we've got to heal that gut lining. A lot of people get what's called a leaky gut from chronic inflammation. And this can be from toxins, from processed foods, from not having enough fiber, from a change in your gut microbiome. Well, what has fiber? A lot of fruits and vegetables. So that's going to be the key and the bulk of your diet, lots of fruits and vegetables. We also want to have healthy fats because fats, cholesterol is the backbone for all steroid hormones. So we've got to give your body fat to make fat. We also want to see, you know, good protein options, and we really want to decrease excess added sugar, artificial sweeteners, and ultra processed foods. Those are more important. What we see is as we start to heal our gut, we can probably target and eat more food groups that are commonly removed. So things like dairy and gluten. And even though I often recommend that we take these out if we're in a gut healing stage, you'll see that in the fertility formula, I talk about how we add them back in and try our gut once it is healed. But Every serving of plant-based protein over animal saw an increase in ovulation in women who had irregular ovulation. So is it safe to be totally plant-based? Yes. Do you have to be? No. But every little decision you make in that direction is helpful. You do not need to be on a no-carb diet at all. You don't need to be in ketosis. Those things are not proven to be helpful with PCOS. When it comes to exercise, your goal is going to depend a little bit on maybe your weight and if you're trying to get pregnant or not, but the key here is going to be build muscle. Skeletal muscle helps your body combat insulin resistance, okay? We talked about backing this up. So how are you going to build more skeletal muscle? It is not by chugging it out, running miles, or on the bike. It's actually going to be resistance and strength training with your body. So doing something every day, it doesn't have to be high intensity. It just needs consistency. And then we also see thinking about how you decrease stress and how you decrease environmental toxins. Number two, we want to think about supplements and what is evidence-based. What I recommend for anybody with PCOS, number one, vitamin D. We want to have at least a thousand IUs of vitamin D. This can be in a lot of prenatals, but it's not always. So look at how much is there. This supports hormone balance. This supports ovulation. And we know women with PCOS have lower vitamin D levels. Number two, omega-3 fatty acids. Also important if you're getting pregnant for baby's brain development, but hugely potent in decreasing inflammation. Number three is going to be inositol. 
I like inositol because it does help improve insulin sensitivity. That means your body is less insulin resistant. It's better able to respond to those clues. And therefore, it is going to help with ovulation. And then, of course, a prenatal vitamin with folic acid, at least 400 mcgs or micrograms if you are trying to get pregnant. Now, if we think about treatment, there's also metformin as an option if you're actually having some irregular ovulation or you have some insulin resistance. Metformin can be highly effective and it has proven alone to help improve ovulation. From there, a lot of people need what's called ovulation induction. And this can either be with Clomid or a medication called Letrozole, also known as Femara. And actually, Letrozole is the drug of choice for PCOS patients. How it works is it decreases estrogen in the periphery. So if you think about the fact that you have a higher baseline estrogen level, I'm going to come in now and decrease that because you're taking letrozole. The brain's going to say, oh my gosh, I don't have an egg growing. I'm going to send out a stronger surge of FSH. So the thought there is to try to get that egg to grow a little earlier in the cycle and shorten that follicular phase and get a more normal, regular ovulatory pattern. We often see some problems with progesterone production in ovulatory dysfunction because the follicle becomes the corpus luteum. So I often support with progesterone as well. I don't like progesterone alone. I like it in combination with ovulation induction because we know that that can be the most advantageous. But before you embark on ovulation induction, I always think it's important no matter your age or your goals to get a complete fertility evaluation. You'll hear some people say, well, you don't ovulate, so let's fix that and we'll do the infertility stuff afterwards. But you would be surprised how often I see somebody who's done six plus months of that and then they come and find out there's no sperm or their tubes are blocked and they were never going to get pregnant with that treatment and it feels like wasted time and money. So let's set ourselves up for success and before you start that, let's get the full fertility evaluation. Uterine tubal anatomy, a ultrasound, getting full blood work and a semen analysis. And then sometimes you need IVF and it's not a failure. Needing any fertility treatment's not a failure. I always say ovulation induction is a little bit of trial and error to figure out the right dose that will actually get you to respond. But if you need IVF, you have a lot of eggs to work with, so you're already starting out in a great place, but it's not all about egg quantity. Egg quality matters too. And inflammation and insulin resistance contribute to that negative egg quality, especially that metabolic factor. So when you're trying to mitigate or manage or control your PCOS to the best of your ability, focus on decreasing inflammation and improving insulin resistance as the start. In a lot of patients, that will lead to natural ovulation, but many times they still need help from the fertility doctor just to optimize the scenario. So it's not about fixing your ovulation per se, it's about getting into a better state where your brain and ovaries can communicate better. So let me know in the comments if you want a video more about IVF or fertility treatments on PCOS, or what specific questions you have, because I know PCOS can be so confusing. Don't forget to pre-order the fertility formula at nataliecrawfordmd.com slash book, and you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast, which is now here on YouTube as well. So don't forget to check out some of those episodes. Thanks, friends. <laughs>